America is going into space. The moon is objective one. Our first lunar flyby, Pioneer 4, demonstrated that rockets can escape Earth's gravity, reach out to the moon and beyond. Ranger 7 made the next significant advance, proving we can stabilize and guide a spacecraft to selected lunar targets. Ranger's cameras show that many areas of the moon's surface are smooth enough to land on. We still needed to know more about the lunar surface. Is it covered with a deep layer of dust, or treacherous fields of tumbled boulders, or both? Will it support the weight of a spacecraft, or the first man to walk on its surface? Survey conceived to answer such vital questions, as well as to survey possible target sites for the forthcoming Apollo manned landings. Hughes Aircraft Corporation was selected to develop the spacecraft under the overall project management of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, California Institute of Technology. Because of its highly demanding mission, new design, engineering, and construction techniques were required for Surveyor. The launch vehicle system is a new, more powerful booster combination, the Atlas Centaur. Tracking and maintaining two-way communications with space vehicles is accomplished by a worldwide deep space network of eight permanent stations strategically located in five countries. From Pasadena, California, the third major system, Mission Operations, will command and control Surveyor during its space transit and operational lifetime on the moon. From this room, and for the first time, Earth-bound pilots will fly a spacecraft, control its flight, landing, and post-landing operations. Each maneuver is pre-planned and painstakingly rehearsed. Mission-trained specialists in the flight path, the spacecraft, space sciences, data processing, and communications train to meet potential emergencies. Only 11 ground commands were needed in the flight of Ranger 7, but a minimum of 280 commands will be necessary just to soft land surveyor. A basic triangular frame supports such vital components as the flight attitude controls, including star and sun sensors and reaction jets, which combine to make surveyor a stable platform in space. The solar panel pointed at the sun can collect solar energy for conversion into electrical power. Flight communication with Earth is maintained through either of two omnidirectional low-gain antennas. Telecommunications electronics, auxiliary battery, high-pressure gas and fuel tanks. Radar serves to mark the altitude above the lunar surface, the main retro rocket, to slow the spacecraft as it makes its lunar approach. Three vernier engines are designed to correct the flight path and later coupled with a radar altimeter and velocity sensing system, keeps the craft stable and reduced touchdown speed to eight miles per hour. Once landed, the high gain antenna pointed back at Earth will return lunar photographs taken by the television camera. The camera, remotely controlled with adjustable exposure and focus and equipped with three color filters, will provide the first lunar surface color pictures. All elements of Surveyor were thoroughly tested. Drop tests verified design integrity, structural strength, and stability. Retro rocket engine firings verified ignition system design, case strength, thrust level, and reliability. Shake testing duplicated acceleration vibrations to be encountered during liftoff booster thrust, separation, mid-course maneuver, and terminal descent. Test results were thoroughly analyzed, then design changes, more testing, and re-evaluations. Liquid fuel engines in the Vernier propulsion system were fired and refired in man-made environments to simulate the stringent conditions of flight into space. 
Then it was time to exercise Surveyor through in-flight sequences. A space simulation chamber duplicated the vacuum of space, the heat of the sun, and the deep cold of the lunar night. Final camera tests. The television system, precise for photo mosaic work, is designed to produce pictures having a resolution one million times finer than the best Earth-based photographs. Now, the last and most important test. A surveyor moon gravity model was balloon lifted and cut loose. Milestone, a completely automatic, fully controlled, rocket-powered soft landing. On board, velocity and altitude sensing radars, analog computer, autopilot, and throttleable rocket engines all tied together for the first time into a successful terminal descent system. Surveyor final checkout. Nothing more can be done on Earth. The word is go. It is time to move out into space. Surveyor arrives encapsulated in its nose fairing at Launch Complex 36A to be raised by the gantry crane and mated to the readied Atlas Centaur launch vehicle. During the last hour of countdown, the gantry is withdrawn. It is the morning of May 30, 1966. We are 65 hours away from the moon. Within minutes, the blockhouse countdown will go into the automatic launch sequence. Cognizant engineers monitor their systems preparatory to launch. In Pasadena, the countdown is monitored from the Space Flight Operations Facility where mission operations personnel stand ready to assume spacecraft control after the launch phase. We are now well into the countdown at approximately three minutes before liftoff. All systems are reported in excellent condition at this time. Pressurization. Go, Atlas. Go, Centaur. Atlas Autopilot. Go. Centaur Autopilot. Go. Launch Director. Go. All recorders fast. Engine start. And it's five, four, Three, two, one. The Atlas looks good. Doppler readout is nominal. Chamber pressure looks good. Liftoff was at 7.41 Pacific Daylight Time on an azimuth of 102 degrees. Part one, part two. The aerodynamic shroud is off and Grand Bahama is tracking. Liftoff plus four minutes and three seconds. As shown by the animated diagrams in the monitor, the Atlas Centaur separation has occurred. We have ignition on both Centaur engines. Liftoff plus 11 minutes and 30 seconds. Centaur cutoff. Surveyor is injected on its lunar flight path. Separation. And report that the landing legs are extended. The surveyor is now in space. Over the next few hours, surveyor locked onto the sun and the star Canopus and was stabilized in cruise mode. By launch plus 15 hours, the flight path was analyzed. Surveyor would land in the target area, but it was decided to refine the path. The correction command was sent to Goldstone. From Goldstone, the order went out to roll and pitch surveyor into a new heading and fire the Bernier engines for exactly 20.8 seconds. The critical maneuver accomplished, surveyor on corrected course was commanded back into cruise mode. Long hours pass. The deep space network continues to command, monitor, and report on the flight. Through terminal maneuver preparations, events are precisely as planned. Surveyor velocity is about 4,654 miles per hour. Altitude is about 1,000 miles above the moon. Velocity increasing. 
distance, closing. Surveyor has been turned into its landing attitude. Four, three, two, one, mark. The command has gone to turn on the altitude marking radar power. Should now get verification of the altitude marking signal. AMR mark. 10 seconds. Four, three, two, one, mark. Vernier ignition, retro is now firing. Ignition looks stable. Falling steadily. 63,000 feet, 3,500 miles an hour. Now at 30,000 feet, retro burnout confirmed. 400 feet per second, vertical velocity. 28,000 feet, 425 feet per second, 24,000 feet. Down to 12,000 feet. 10,000, all signals normal. 8,000 feet, 250 feet per second. 200 feet per second. Surveyor reported in excellent condition, all signals good. As shown by the animated diagrams, 4,000 feet and stable. 1,000 foot mark. 800 feet. 600, 400 feet, 200 feet, 100 feet, 13 feet per second speed. Touchdown, the bus chief reports a touchdown. We're getting good engineering commutator two data. There was no loss of lock with the surveyor during the complete descent maneuver. This is surveyor operations. We estimate that the first test television picture will come through in about 12 to 15 minutes if all of the other sequences of engineering checkout proceed as they are now in a normal manner. Soft landing executed. Communications reported reliable. Ground data handling systems functioning. June 1, 1966, seven minutes before midnight. Surveyor's first photograph was received on Earth and displayed in the JPL Space Science Analysis and Command Area. Before the mission was over, more than 11,000 individual pictures were returned. Individual scenes were arranged to form a lunar surface mosaic within the shell of a lunar model. Pictures of a surveyor footpad show only light surface indentation. At the landing site, measured surface strength 6 to 10 pounds per square inch. The lunar surface texture, not thick layers of loose dust into which spacecraft or men could sink, but separate, very fine granular particles weakly held together. Detailed color measurements show the lunar surface material uniformly gray. There are open areas, craters, and many rocks, some a yard or more in diameter. Overall conclusions of great significance to the Apollo project. In the area of the ocean of storms, man can land and walk on the lunar surface. As the mission continued, Earth days passed and the sun set on the lunar plains. The deep, cold space night set in. But 21 Earth days later, in the noon of a new lunar day, Surveyor came back to life. January, 1967. 220 days after landing, commands were sent and the spacecraft still responded, though the mission was officially over when Surveyor was commanded to hoist high its antenna and solar panels, to cast forever its long shadow across the lunar mare, a landmark for future missions, a monument to man's quest to reach out to the moon and beyond. <laughs>